conjugating a by g conjugating a by g is done implies g a g inverse this may be an element called a prime when you conjugate a by g you may get a prime then we say a a prime are conjugate to each other a and a prime are conjugate to each other now we can ask a question that if i have a all those elements that are conjugate to a i can represent it as a class so we define what is called a conjugacy class let me call it as ca conjugacy class is set of all elements g a g inverse for all i try this with all g in g i try this with all g in g i may get some repetitions i omit those repetitions so set of all elements you try g a g inverse you will get set of elements first one may be a prime second one may be a double prime and so on so put all the all of them together then they will be called conjugacy class of a so in one class you may not get all elements of the group then you try with an element which is not found in this group you will get another class so you can write g as union of disjoint classes okay so you if you if you get disjoint classes just like yesterday we wrote g as union of disjoint cosets so you can write here g as union of disjoint classes this giant conjugate when i say classes it's always conjugacy classes this giant conjugacy classes how many elements will be there in the class of identity suppose if i take class of identity what can i say about this Huh? So what I have to have, I must put identity here. Then what happens? I get identity. Whatever is this G, I will always get only identity. So I start with identity. By this conjugation operation, I cannot produce anything other than the identity. So the conjugacy class of identity is only identity. it has only one element correct suppose if i have an abelian group if i have an abelian group take any element okay so if g is abelian what can i say about class of any element a so i if it is abelian what happens i can flip this g a can be written as a g g g inverse is identity so i will get same element so if you have an abelian group every element is a class by itself no element is conjugate to any other element okay number of elements will be same as number of classes but if you have a non abelian group then you can have 
classes with more than one element and the whole group can be written as a union of disjoint classes. Okay. So, this implies every element is a class by itself. Yeah, you can define any map which is 1, 1, on 2 and uh, preserves the multiplication table. Okay. <coughs> Suppose if we have two groups, let us say, <coughs> so we define first what is called homomorphism. It is a map phi from a group G to a group G prime. G and G prime are different. When I say these two are different groups, the group composition may also be different. It may be uh, it may be a simple multiplication, it may be a matrix multiplication. So, the group composition can be different. When I say two different groups, completely different groups. The sets are different, multiplication is different. So, I have a function, I have a function, a map phi mapping g to g prime. Okay. This is called a homomorphism. It is called homomorphism. if it should preserve the multiplication table phi a into phi b is equal to phi a b for all a b in the group g. Okay. When I say this, what does it mean? If A is in G, phi A is in G prime, correct? If A is in G, phi of A is in G prime. And phi of E should be equal to E prime, identity to identity mapping. and phi of A inverse is equal to phi of A inverse. So, if we write these properties, then we can be guaranteed that this mapping preserves the group multiplication table. So, this a mapping which satisfies these conditions is called a homomorphism. What can you say about phi of G? that is all elements of G. Phi of G, phi of G, what can we say about this? This should be a subset of G prime. If it is equal to G prime, then it is an onto map. Okay? It is a subset of, this is called phi of g is called range of phi. Okay, range of phi, this is called range of phi. This is called range of phi. But it is only a matter of, uh, uh, <coughs> it is only a matter of renaming in the sense if I have a G prime I can call this itself as my G prime then I can say phi of G is equal to G prime. Okay? So, I can always if, if, if range is different from G prime I rename range of G as range of phi as G prime. So, there is no loss of generality if I assume that phi of g is equal to g prime. Phi of 
phi of g is equal to g prime. If it is not g prime, then we will rename g prime as range of phi. Okay, that's all that we are going to do. Now I can define a set K all elements in G such that phi of A is equal to E prime. That means elements of G that are mapped to the identity in G prime. Okay, so E prime in G prime. Elements of A, elements of G map to E prime. This is called kernel of phi. This is called kernel of the homomorphism phi. Okay. Now show that kernel is a subset, right? K is a subset of G. K is a subset of G. We can show that K is a normal subgroup of G. It's not only a subset, but it can also be a subgroup and it is also a normal subgroup or invariant subgroup of G. So, kernel of a homomorphism is an invariant subgroup of the group. Now, we can define another mapping called isomorphism. So, what is isomorphism? Isomorphism is a map from G to G prime. It is a map from G to G prime and phi is 1, 1 to 1 and on to. That means, in homomorphism, Many elements can be mapped onto one element here, but for isomorphism, one element will be mapped onto only one element. It is also so a homo isomorphism has an additional requirement that there should be a one-to-one -one correspondence between elements of G and G prime. That's what I said. It's in general in two, but if you if you assume if you call G prime as range of G, it becomes on to. Yeah, on to, in general you can say it is an on to, on to, huh? on to means, let us say you have a set here, you have another set here. I define a function, okay. If the function, so let us say, I have one to one correspondence then you call this as 1 1. Okay. On the other hand, I have a map which does not leave anything in this set. That is every element in this set has a pre-image. That is you are defining the function on to the set. On the other hand, if I have a function which only has this and there are some entries here which are not having a pre-image. This is called into, this is on to and this is one one. Okay, so, that is the, uh, I am not giving a <coughs> mathematical definition, I am giving a feel to understand what this is. If you want to call this G prime as G, yeah, automorphism is within the group. Okay, homomorphism is yeah, one group to another group. 
Okay, so this is uh, an additional requirement that it should also be one to one. Now you can show that since this is a normal subgroup, you can construct a factor group G quotient K. Okay, is isomorphic. to G prime that is for this is all true for a given homomorphism you have a homomorphism and homomorphism has a kernel kernel is a normal subgroup and you can construct a quotient group or a factor group which you can show it to be isomorphic to G prime ok so <coughs> Again, we will do all these things in tutorials. The way I am postponing these things to tutorials looks like we have to stay here till 7 or 8 o'clock today. Okay, this tutorial you can conduct in your, uh, uh, at your home also. So, this is isomorphic to G. So, these are G prime. G, K is isomorphic to G prime. Then we have a couple of other concepts involving two groups. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me.